Welcome everybody back to the Martin Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY in New York City. And today we uh, continue our, uh, our trip, our uh, connection to the Caribbean, to um, the great uh, island of uh, Guadeloupe, where we are at the SUNY Center, where we already talked about our a new collection of plays, new plays from the Caribbean, which we um, just published uh, in collaboration with Stephanie Berard from uh, Paris and where we had playwrights from Martinique, Guadeloupe and Haiti. We did great readings, six of them in New York City. They were fantastic. Um, there was Sylvain Guillot uh, did a, a reading of a Haitian writer and uh, there were many, many other great um, and presentations. And because it was such an success, an inspiring event, we all decided to continue. And now we are here to um, reconnect um, to our friends. And we have Elvia Vesas from the Cija uh, Company, uh, Eddie uh, Compere from the Sony Center, a translator, uh, Emily, and, um, and then from Indianapolis, Daniela is joining us and Genevieve from Montreal, who are thinking um, to um, perhaps bring a work from uh, Gilbert Lomont uh, to um, the United States or to the North America. And uh, we just watched last night a fantastic, beautiful uh, 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 work. Um, it was called the Histoire du Negre, the Tales of Black Histories in the correct, politically correct translation. And we're gonna see now an excerpt um, of that. And um, it should be about three, four, five minutes. And then once we saw that, we will start our discussion with the director, uh, with Gilbert, who is just joining us. And, um, and here we go. So, um, Thea, if you could help us and play the video so the audience has a little bit of an idea um, what's happening on the Caribbean theater scene. <laughs> Histoire de nègre HDN HDN D'Edouard Glissant Adaptation et mise en scène Gilbert Lomor Avec Varencia Antoine Harry Baltus Lucille Cancel Et la collaboration Du groupe Vukum Mouvement culturel Guadeloupe Histoire de nègre Histoire de nègre Histoire de nègre Direction musicale Claude Chiavue Production de la compagnie Sillage Théâtre d'île en monde HDN En coproduction avec l'archipel scène nationale de Guadeloupe Encore la main Encore la main En suivant, chose Quatre siècles de pièges De baïonnettes et de bûchers Où sont les portes du temps Nul ne peut nous entendre Ce n'est pas faute de crier c'est pas à tout la même poussée. Le cri, la fièvre, la même histoire dans la même histoire. Même histoire là, même combat là. Et il m'a Histoire de nègre. Quand un homme vend des hommes comme des choses, comme des bêtes. Ces membres là qui ont baissé si gorge en nous, avec genou à nous. On peut pas respirer. On peut pas respirer. I can't breathe. Histoire de nègre. Un jour, tu ne seras plus un nègre marron solitaire, mais un peuple d'un seul élan et qui fait face. Même histoire là, même combat là. J'ai la foi. La foi en quoi La foi en la vie. Histoire de nègre. Histoire de nègre. So yeah, welcome um, back everybody. So we saw the, the promotional video um, of that uh, great um, um, great work, which I also saw uh, last night at the Sony Center. So um, maybe um, let's start with Eddie Compere, who is with us. Say a few words about your, your theater. Um, where um, this play is happening right now. I think tonight is another uh, uh, um, presentation. It rained last night. We could hear the rain outside, the insects. It was hot. It's, uh, they have, it's fire inside and uh, uh, smoke. Uh, one or two people fainted before and after the show. So it's a real physical event. Um, that is uh, getting into the minds and under the skins of the people. Eddie, tell us a little bit about your theater, what you do there and what it is all about. 
Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Santal Cultural Sonis is a theater. Uh, we are in the city of uh, Abim. Uh, it's an equipment who, uh, who have two levels. Uh, one of level is education. So uh, we have a part of education, music, uh, theater, and dance. And the other, other part is producing, creating, and um, a small, a small place of 20, 20, uh, 20 hundred, five people, uh, 50 people. So last night was an amazing, amazing uh, play. Uh, so we have full, uh, and, uh, so the people were so surprised to see the new, uh, a new, a new form about uh, the, the Caribbean theater, uh, a new form uh, about uh, um, a, a new writing about uh, the Caribbean theater and the people were so happy. <laughs> yes, you said uh, Frankie was so hot inside and it's raining outside. <laughs> but uh, that's a Caribbean, the Caribbean in all times, uh, the weather's changed. So the people is uh, uh, all time hot in heart. So the people appreciate a lot. And uh, tonight we have another, another representation. And uh, when the people finished to see, uh, he was so surprised and so happy to see a new form, a new way of the uh, Caribbean theater. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. So um, let's come to the producers. They company Siage, they BFM Elvia with us, who's also hosting uh, uh, me here. You were also uh, very much and deeply involved together with Stephanie Vera in the Caribbean uh, playwriting project, uh, the um, ACT, uh, Action Caribe, Caribe Theatrale, if I say that right. So um, Elvia, tell us a little bit um, about uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that work. Uh, what, why did you? Why did your company produce it? What, what's the idea? Um, you are on mute. Maybe I'm not sure if we can hear you. Um... Yeah. So first of all, I would like to point out that there has been a tremendous, tremendous work done before of coming to the idea. To, before coming to the decision of producing this play. And thanks to Stephanie Berard, we were able to meet Emily Sakion. It's been quite a long time already. And then, um, uh, and so Emily Sakion asked Gilbert to invite Gilbert to the University of Georgia for a residence where he, um, where he was invited to, to create a lecture around this play. And then um, after that, uh, Dana invited us to, to to do the same thing. Well, in a different perspective, because the the Dana she she's uh, specialized in in history, and so it would have a different resonance too. And uh, so for us, it was very important to to um, well actually to produce the play because I, I really I strongly believe that. The, the, I mean, the people, the young people here in the island need to know more about their, their history. As everyone knows, it's a colonized, it was a colonized uh, island. So uh, it's only now that they're starting to discover and to learn more about their own history. And so it was, uh, I, would say, I was vital. I would say that it was vital to, uh, to produce this play. And we are very thank to, thankful to um, Eddie Comper to be part of this venture to this. Mm -hmm. And also we, it, it's sort of a, like we say in French, boule de neige. So now it's Jean Vieva that is joining us to, to really be able to cross, uh, to build this bridge to, to Canada. So, um, well, I'm very, very proud to be part of this project and also, well, I mean, there's projects, and obviously, it's a big challenge to also um, to see how how it would be possible to to make tours, and because I know that this is a big production, and so we're thinking about the different possibility of adapting the yeah, well. the play. Uh, let's talk first a bit about the production, um, <clears throat> and first of all, let's also say hello to Gilbert. Gilbert, how are you? Hello. Shows. How hello, everybody. I'm good. Good. I start to acknowledge the, the work of uh, Emily and uh, Dana. That's where it all started. It all started in UGA 
in Indianapolis, where I had the opportunity to direct a public stage reading of the play. And it, for me, it was the opportunity uh, this work uh, from uh, Glissant, which I didn't know. And it was very, 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 very uh, in uh, 2017. And then after that, we had, uh, we had our first pattern. Yeah, um, um, I think that in Guadeloupe. Yeah. And now we are. It's not so easy to hear you. It sounds interrupted. Maybe you could join uh, uh, Eddie in his office. I think this. Uh, what shall I do? Yeah, maybe go up uh, uh, to him and um, and maybe you're next to each other. I think we can hear you better because it's important what you have to say. Who? who, who can who you go to Eddie? John, who, Elvia, or? To Eddie, go to Eddie's room, Eddie's office, and maybe sit next to him or or you both change go places. To Eddie's office, okay. Yeah, um, because we. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah, we need to hear you. Um, so um, to give an idea that this is a, a unusual uh, a work, of course, we have uh, Daniela from Indianapolis and Emily, who is um, with us from Georgia, um, working together. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to go through the, through France, but through American partners. Um, but at the core also of the piece is the work of the great Caribbean writer, philosopher, poet, uh, Edouard Glissant. Um, which uh, uh, is presented in the way of a collage. So it's not a, a, a written play by a playwright. It is this great idea of the 20th century, which we learned from Rauschenberg, Warhol, and others, that new idea of a collage of material that already existed. So Emily, maybe tell us a little bit, uh, since you do the research, you also have a publication coming out. Why is that important, that play, that material? Why did you say uh, to... Um, to Gilbert, please do this. Yes, um, my collaborator, Andrew Daly, who's at the University of Memphis, he and I translated this play together into English. And I asked Gilbert to come to the University of Georgia to stage a reading because this is a timely um, play or it's an adventure. Glissant called it a theatrical adventure. It's a timely theatrical adventure. Although it's from 1971, it continues to resonate today. Um, if I could talk a little bit about the context in which it's created, because I think that context is key to understanding what this. Was, yeah, what was his idea? What was uh, uh, so, yeah, his so, idea? So Edouard Glissant created a cultural center and a private school that was called the Institut Martinique d'Etudes or the Institute of Martinican Studies. And he created this school in 1967 because Caribbeans at that time were being taught the French curriculum, our ancestors, the blonde, blue-eyed Gauls. And he wanted to not only um, educate his pupils, and he had diverse pupils in this school, but to share those messages throughout Martinique. And so theater became a means to take the teachings um, and the dialogues, because there were also plenty of intellectuals coming and having dialogues, out um, throughout Martinique. And they created this play from source texts. And for them, the sources were both historical texts um, and post-colonial literature. Authors like Aimé Césaire, Kateb Yassine, who's um, Algerian, and James Foreman in the US. So it was a diasporic um, set of authors. And Glissant said he wanted to extend it to all threatened communities all people threatened by colonialism. Put the text together, Glissant wrote the transition pieces, he directed them in the rehearsals, and they divided it into three parts. First, slavery. Second, um, the struggle for liberation, which moves from Martinique to the Congo, to the United States, the Black freedom struggle in the United States. And then three, the contemporary moment in Martinique, which was 1971, they talked about brainwashing um, the Martinican public through consumerism. So um, it was an interactive play and they performed it for, thousand, for about a thousand working class spectators throughout Martinique. Um, and the um, 
Let's see, the last thing that I want to say about that is that um, I've been working with Gilbert also as dramaturg. So Gilbert and I talked about what it would mean to be faithful to Glissant's practice. We've done several adaptations. Um, and so it, what Gilbert has created is uh, an update. Let's, him. You know, let's hear from Gilbert what, what okay. he said. Tell a little bit. So it was Clisson the director of this? Is great, all right? He directed it himself in a university setting. In a where was that? Ha where what theater did it happen? Where did it happen? It was performed outside in places like cafeterias, a grass common. He really wanted to get the public. He wanted to get folks who would not normally go to the theater to see the show. And they traveled throughout Martinique. They gave little pamphlets out. They, they asked people to come and people would set up lawn chairs or sit on the ground and watch the performance. Incredible. As things what as so many people talk now about, about a theater we should be engaging in in the time after Corona, after COVID, to reach communities, go outside of the theaters, collage, text, have a politically engaged theater, but open, especially reaching out to the people who, to, who are most affected by this, something he did in 1972. Um, Daniela, we come to you a little bit later. Let's now come to uh, Gilbert. Gilbert is a director of theater and is one of the great directors of the Caribbean. Um, before we come to the play, tell us a little bit, um, how, how did you get to theater? How, how, what was your, your, uh, uh, your, your schema, your route? How did you get where you are right now? Uh, actually, I didn't uh, intend, intended from the start to be uh, an actor. Uh, but I, I remember when I was in school, I, I used to love poetry and uh, to read to read up uh, texts. And then uh, every every time we, I, I I was in a in a theater play within the school, they told me, "Oh, you're doing good. You should do theater and so forth." Then I started. Actually, I started by music. I I I, I love and I still love singing. And uh, I thought maybe I would be a, a singer. And then uh, the theater caught up with me. And I started my uh, education as, as an actor in Denmark. Don't ask, don't ask me why and how, but I started my education as an actor in Copenhagen, Denmark. And that's where it all started. The thing I can tell you that I always uh, loved languages. Uh, I speak several languages, uh, English, French, Spanish, Creole um in danish and that's that's how it all started uh, and i i the the fact that i speak uh, several languages uh, allowed me to get um to get easy contact to uh, the Car my my caribbean neighbors because uh, as you know in the, in the in the caribbean uh, the, the main languages are french english uh, creole and, and spanish and uh, after my uh, education uh, as an actor in Denmark, I, I came back to Guadeloupe and I started, uh, I couldn't do, I didn't have choice because, you know, nothing was organized at the time. I'm talking about the, the 80s. Uh, and when I started there, people just, you know, were looking at me, at me in amazement when I, say, when I said I, my profession, profession was an actor. In in, uh, in Guadeloupe, there are two things they say. For musicians, they say it's uh, music is a is a job for lazy people. Lazy in uh, theater, you know, they, they they cannot fancy how I, you can make a living out of theater. Then I started singing in the hotels and in, in the touristic resorts, and uh, little by little, I came back to theater in uh, in. Uh, the end of the 80s and in the beginning of the 90s. And uh, what happened is that I literally uh, fell in love with uh, my own culture and I get in contact with uh, whatever uh, activity was done uh, around theater. Uh, we didn't have professional uh, uh, groups at, at, at this period of time. So I, st I spent a lot of time in Martinica, our neighbor, Martinica. And at the time, uh, Césaire was still living. So we, 
we ha I had the opportunity and the honor to uh, play in front of, of Césaire. And uh, that's, that's how I, I, little by little, I was very, very often uh, in, the, in the, the big event called the Festival de Fort de France. And uh, little by little, you know, the, the, the theater was uh, in Guadeloupe was organizing a little better. We had the, the, the birth of the La Seine Nationale. Uh, the first director was uh, Pernita Lafleur. And it was fantastic what she did for, you know, for uh, spreading the, the, the theater and uh, what, you know. And uh, that's how it all started. And uh, to be more precise, it uh, was a very good thing that I started being invited in Avignon Theater and have a real uh, web of, you know, uh, of, of friends uh, uh, who are into theater, some of them manager of uh, big theater, like Alain Timar, like uh, Serge Barbouchia, Greg Germain. And that's how I, for, for me it all started. Fantastic. Great. Um, Daniela, before we come to you, Eddie, um, mentioned it, um, you know, that this was an, an, an exciting evening, for, even for that place that hosts so many seminars, groups, drummers, you know, they, they got everybody together in the round, the doors were open. Um, so tell me, how did you get the idea for it? Why do you think uh, this was an important play? How do you connect it to Emily and Daniela? So how, did, how was, was the burst? What was the idea for the Histoire du Negro or the, uh, the Tales of Black History? For me, it's very important to start with acknowledging the, and, uh, you know, and, uh, the, the work of Emily, uh, Dana, and Andrew. For me, it's really it's worth you know, acknowledging them and uh, thanking them for that because uh, uh, they did a tremendous work for starting with the translation. And that's how it came to me. I didn't know, uh, I knew uh, Glissant as a, a thinker, uh, a poet, a phil philosopher, but I, I did, I did uh, know much about him as, as a play writer. And thanks to the invitation of uh, first Eugene in the person of uh, Emily, and then uh, Indianapolis in the person of Dana, uh, that's, uh, where I was invited to direct uh, public reading uh, of, uh, of display in the, in the English translation. It was for me the opportunity to get in contact with the students uh, in UGA. It was a, a great experience for me. It was a, 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 the opportunity for me to share my, my culture and to, uh, to, to see how other people are in, interesting in, uh, interested in, uh, in uh, uh, sharing uh, and hearing more about our culture. And then uh, from that, the opportunity started to arise. The first was the, the partnership we had with uh, La Seine Nationale, uh, where we, where we uh, did our first, our first uh, creation of uh, the French version. You ask me how, how and why, you know, it starts with my great, great, great interest of my own culture. And when I came back to Guadeloupe after my, uh, after being, having, having, you know, after my, uh, the, my, the great period uh, away from the island, uh, I was completely, you know, uh, fascinated by the, the beauty, the importance, uh, and the greatness of, uh, our, uh, of what, what they call Groca. Uh, I started to know about Le Leros. I started to know how to, to write Creole, which is uh, a very recent uh, uh, thing that it, it was, you know, uh, made thanks to, to ling uh, people, linguists like uh, Hector Poulet, Sylvain Telchid, and I started to meet those people and to study with those people. So it allowed me to read a lot of books in, in Creole, uh, mostly uh, poems and uh, fairy tales and so forth. And uh, I was, every time there was an opportunity for me to, to, to learn more and to know more about my culture, I did. 
And uh, the second thing that happened, it was, of course, uh, when uh, Elvia and me, we decided to, to create CH, uh, which is our, our company. And CH uh, um, allowed us to, to have a very important tool to, uh, to uh, visit the, in the, the, the Caribbean area and to answer, answer to uh, their call and their, to participate in the, in, the, in the projects. One of the most important meeting was with the, the lamented uh, uh, Eugenio Hernandez Espinosa, who unfortunately is no longer with us, but it was a tremendous, a fantastic uh, theater man. He was a brother for me. He was a, a teacher. He was an am amazing person. And he really uh, gave me so much strength and so much, he, he, he taught me so much and he shared completely his theater with me. And it was some amazing times, you know, it was before meeting really Dana and, uh, and, uh, and Emily, but this man was very important for me. And we started, uh, thanks to um, uh, CH to make ex exchanges. Uh, uh, Cubans uh, actors, important uh, theater men came, came to uh, Guadeloupe and uh, the other way around. We spent time in, in Cuba uh, with Elvia and, uh, and other, uh, other artists. And we, we created things. We co-writed, I co I co uh, write it with Eugenio, which was a, a, a huge honor. Uh, that's, that's, that's how we started to, to go from island to island in the, in the, in the Caribbean. We had some very, uh, very in, intense activity uh, uh, um, be, being and traveling in, with, with our, our work, with our profession, traveling from uh, island to island, like with Trinidad, like uh, we, we've been to Cuba, Haiti, and so forth. Amazing. Yeah, it's not so easy actually to travel between the islands as one might think. And Creole also for our viewers, it was not allowed actually to be taught in the, the schools uh, in Guadeloupe and other islands for a long time by um, the French administration. So it's a rediscovery, not only for you as a person, as an artist, but also I think for the islands. Um, Daniel, or Dana, as your friends here say, um, tell us a bit, why is that uh, a project important to you? And tell us a bit about Glissant. Why do we have to listen to what he collaged? Okay, so my name is Daniela Kostrin. I'm at Indiana University in Indianapolis. And yes, I go by Dana. And I this play became important to me really just by chance. I was organizing a conference for French historians here in, in at my university, and I our our university has a tradition or dedication to a community outreach, community engagement, and so I wanted to organize an event as part of my conference that engaged the local community. And I was talking to people about this, and it was just completely serendipitous that someone had was at a panel where they heard Emily and Andrew present on this project. And as soon as I heard about their project, I said, I wanna bring them to Indianapolis. So I tracked them down <laughs> and um, we, we staged a reading as part of an, it was an academic conference here on the university campus, but we also, but we, I brought together um, Siage with a local, um, company called the Asante Art Institute, which has a, um, it's a local, locally run theater group, mostly for children, um, trying to teach life skills through the arts. That's their mission. And we were, I was able to work with them to get some of their adult um, alumni from their program to work with Gilbert, who came here for a week. They still talk about it. <laughs> it's the most exhausting week of their lives. <laughs> but um, they they worked together. They workshop for a week, and then we did the stage reading in front of a, a public that was the university community, the Indianapolis community, and then scholars of French history from all over. The, we had people from seven different countries, and I think what that experience says about this play is it talks about the importability of it and how it, it, it can become meaningful in any place, like in ways that you wouldn't 
wouldn't expect. And I think it's interesting that the play was originally designed to be produced in different spaces. And I think that's something that anyone who's interested in this play should experiment with. But for instance, my university, like many Midwestern <clears throat> urban universities was built on a neighborhood that had been redlined and then an, a traditional African-American neighborhood that had been redlined and then bulldozered to create an interstate in this urban campus. And so the story of colonization really is part of our story as, as an institution. And to have this play, and, and it's still a source of contention in the city. There, there's healing that still needs to be done between the university and the city and our African-American community here. And bringing this play was a way to occupy the space and have this conversation. And because the play is interactive, um, it, people could write their story into the play. They could participate, they could talk. And it really became this very moving and powerful experience. I mean, I mean, whenever I go to the conferences now, everybody talks about this. It's, 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 Tell a bit about Glisson also. About I am going to defer to Emily for Glisson. Well, Emily, a bit about, uh, Glisson, about his world of thinking. And I think the Caribbean is an important region of the world and we do not pay enough attention to it also as in its entirety because it does include uh, Jamaica, Cuba, Puerto Rico, uh, of course, Guadeloupe, Martinique, uh, Haiti, um, and in that new time we live in, in that new fundamentalism um, where we leave the Holocene as the biologists and uh, environmentalists say behind and we move into the Anthropocene where we have to face big questions, how to live in the world. This region perhaps has something to offer and I think it does, you know, to, to, to mankind as a way of living and to, to organize thoughts. And Glissant was well, a great thinker from here. So why is he important? Why do so many people refer to him? Obrist, Ulrich Obrist calls him one of his saints uh, um, next to Itel Adnan and others. So why is he so important? So Glissant, um, not only did he think deeply about the Caribbean and become sort of worldwide um, associated with understanding Caribbean cultures, Caribbean languages, Caribbean poetics, um, but he also, just as you're saying, Frank, he's the one who most influentially said what's going on in the Caribbean is applicable to the whole world. Um, and so I would say probably his best known work, Caribbean Discourse, was created, um, and that helps us to understand the Caribbean and Caribbean cultures and really Caribbean worldviews, epistemologies, Caribbean thinking. That was created while he was doing all of this work with the, the Martinican the Institute for Martinican Studies. And so this play, you know, which was an experiment in taking the lessons from his school to the public um, is also an example of the Caribbean discourse in action, in practice. Um, but then later Glissant went on to write some more and very influentially he wrote poetics of relation. Um, and that is probably what you're referring to. In poetics of relation, he talks about um, relating to others and cultures and conflict through relation, um, through relationships, and through, um, and, and talks about opacity, understanding that um, I can, when, when I meet someone from another culture, I cannot fully understand them. I cannot understand them with any kind of truth that they would not have generated on their own. And so this idea of relation is, you know, the heart of the Caribbean. And he says relation was born on the womb abyss of the slave ship. And so the trauma of slavery, of being um, uprooted from African cultures and being put um, together with other enslaved people and all, later um, with white people and some indigenous people as, as well in the Caribbean, that was a womb. It was a creative impulse 
And it was also this abyss, um, both a trauma and the the abyss um, and for Glissant, the abyss really of knowledge, the people uprooted from their families and their ways of knowing the world in Africa, they're in an abyss, but that abyss gives rise to something new. And um, that understanding of knowledge and culture through relation is the understanding that has really been applied um, to the world. Yeah, and his idea, idea of the archipelagos, that, you know, the islands are individual islands, but they are in relation to each other. Together, they form a landscape. America, in a way, North America, South America, they are islands also. They are big islands. People forget about it here, but there are relations and they are part of something bigger. His idea of the creolization of the world, the creole language for him was a beautiful idea of a language that absorbed, that mixed, that changed. And he said, you know, this is actually what we should be doing and not to be afraid of or forbid to teach. It's actually at the core of mankind. And this is how art uh, and human relations and human existence has been. And the Caribbean is a living example. Um, why the production also is interesting, it's an experiment. And I'm sure there is still work to do on the play and to do it. The, there is a tradition here um, of the, the rose. Um, which I think is a, a stunning uh, cultural tradition and in a way uh, so contemporary. It's a con socially uh, engaged art community involvement, uh, professional artists with people, you know, who come and hear the dream what the Tate London would like to do and the Berlin Festspiele. But it is something that happens here regularly. Um, and uh, Gilbert, maybe tell us a little bit about the idea also, the philosophical idea of what is the rose, the dance, uh, the circle, if I understand right from my view last night, something where you based your play on and said, you know, this is a form in theater that we should pay attention to. Tell us a little bit about this unique thing that I think is so important. You're muted. Maybe your sound is off. Oh. Yes, as you were saying before, Historically, it started in the, in the period of, the sla of slavery, and it was uh, a kind of secret event because, uh, of course, uh, any kind of gathering was forbidden uh, for the slaves, and they managed to, to meet each other. You have to remember that most of the time, they were chosen from, for different countries of the African continent and they couldn't, in order that they couldn't communicate so easily and so, you know, to prevent any kind of uh, rebellion. So uh, they invented this way of, uh, you know, getting together and uh, sharing what, whatever they ha had to share through music, through uh, uh, songs, and through their, the culture that they brought from, uh, from the, the, the continent. So let me describe it. If if then you tell me if I see it wrong, there whatever in the early times there was a secret meeting place. People said let's meet at eleven o'clock or ten o'clock in the night. There's a circle of people in the part of the circle. In the as the drummers are singers, audiences um, are in front um, of the drummers. The circle inside is empty, and um, drumming starts after an introduction, and then people the audience members, women of all ages and also men come and dance towards the drummers. Their back is to the audience and they move the drummers, do a music, a drumming session for the person in front of them. And then through some kind of a code, an invisible understanding, um, people then, a new one comes up, all the person leaves, the drummer stop. So, the, and it goes, on not only till midnight or one o'clock or through o'clock, it goes till four or five o'clock. So it's kind of a living uh, shared dance experience, but not no spoken words. And um, and um, and I think the, the the songs or the music they are known right to the people. The the, the Lewis is a, uh, the place of communication, and the circle is very important. I think it's. Uh, partly a heritage of, from Africa. That's where the, that's in, inside the, cir the circle that the griot, the griot was, uh, who was a, a living uh, uh, library, 
he was uh, uh, delivering uh, knowledge and uh, he knew all about uh, who came from where and uh, you know the, the Goya was a very important uh, character in the, in in the African society and uh, the 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 African slaves you know carried with them uh, the secrets and the knowledge and the rituals um, and uh, their their body you know were, were a living a la elaborate body and minds of course were a living library because the any kind of uh, practicing uh, their own religion or their own uh, beliefs was uh, completely uh, forbidden. So, uh, as you said, in silence, what is very particular and special of our, of our area in Guadeloupe, I, I think is the one of the only, or maybe the only, where the dancer enters alone in the, in the circle, and he faces the drums. There are three drums. There are one, the, the, the one in the middle is the solo dr drummer. And his job is to start a, a dialogue, a communication, a conversation with the, the dancer. And the two other, uh, the two other drums, one on, on, on the left of the solo and the other one on the right, they are just maintaining the the groove, the, the tempo, the, the rhythm. And the, the whole conversation is, is between uh, the, the solo uh, drum player and the dancer. And it's very important because you don't get into the circle if you don't have, if you, don't have, if you didn't um, go through a kind of knowledge of the secret of the, of, and the rules. Uh, and, uh, you know how and when to, to, to get inside and you have a certain amount of time to tell your story. And there is a very special moment, which is a, a code uh, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a musical phrase and you know that you can enter and, and then uh, start to, to tell your own story and the other one uh, get out of the circle. Yeah. Uh, they are not the professional dancers. They're just people from the town, from the village. It's a, it's a, after the slavery became, uh, you know, a rural. It, it was mostly mostly the people from uh, the, the the plantation, uh, the the cane, sugarcane plantation. It was a rural uh, uh, activity, and it was fantastic that. In spite of the all the the, the oppression and. Uh, it was for, completely forbidden um, to, to practice it, but it survived until now. Uh, and this is one of the miracles, you know, that, uh, uh, and for me, it's, for, for me, it's one of the a place of resistance where uh, the resistance of the, of the language, which were too under oppression and oppression and with a lot of, you know, because we, we are in a in a context of a, 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 dom, a, a culture dominating another, you know. And um, in spite of that, for me, the miracle is that uh, the language survived, and uh, and uh, this knowledge survived too. And this is, I call it, some people uh, prefer to call it a ceremony um, yeah. because for me it's a place where you 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 you. you you get the knowledge. And uh, for me, it was a, a huge uh, library for me <laughs> to, to, to get in touch with uh, uh, the knowledge. Uh, and and uh, this part of our orality is uh, uh, deeply rooted in, in this event. There are other circles, but for me, the, the three, three main circles are Leo was. The other one is the, the circle of the uh, wake, you know, when somebody dies and you, you spend the night celebrating and uh, not crying uh, necessarily. And uh, it is uh, one of the, it is the second circle and the third is the circle of the, of the storyteller, like the griot I was mentioning before. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it's the place, a place of resistance. 
of resistance. And it is amazing. It's a life tradition. It's not something you look at history books and you see a, a, a black and white print of something. No, it's alive. It happens at least once a month, if I understand right. Where I was between 500 or 1,000 people were there. I don't know uh, how many people really came. So it is something that is alive. But now tell us a little bit about your adaptation. There's, there is the text from uh, Glisson that was somewhere in... I don't know, in some archive in a box, and I guess Emily found it. Uh, maybe tell us also how that worked. And then, you know, they ask you uh, to uh, connect to it. So how did you put these two together? What is the idea for the staging? What was your work with the actors, the musicians, and you invented some of the guardians? So tell us a little bit. Well, when I'm talking about miracles, <laughs> it's not exaggerating because, you know, I had spent this very long time of, of my of my life knowing a little more uh, you know about my the history the culture the language of, of guadeloupe and uh i was really prepared when when it, when uh, the thing came came to me um i i do in my adaptation i i wouldn't say i well i really uh, I'm in uh, in in a form of respecting uh, the the original thought of uh, and the style of uh, of Glissant because this Glissant he didn't say exactly you know he didn't mention Le Rose he didn't mention because Le Rose is typical to to Guadeloupe uh, but for me it ha it. It has a kind of a breach, you know, the theater man, the the the, the famous uh, theater uh, theory, theorician. Yeah, uh, the Bertolt Brecht, yes. Bertolt Brecht, who uh, I wouldn't say invented, but you know, started what he called this tentation of for Framdung, and this for Framdung, we do it, you know. Uh, <laughs> In the in the circle of the of the um, uh, storyteller, because Glissant was saying, you know, it's, it's for me it's typical fair from doing thing, you know, when he's talking to the audience and say, okay, you you here listening to me, but are you really hearing what I'm saying? Do you, do you get the message? Don't uh, uh, you know? Don't be uh, impressed by my 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 talent or my. my what about the message? You know and. Uh, I see maybe in, inside in the circle, some of you can just take my place since you have something to say, just, uh, you know, come, come, come yeah. stand up and, you know, that, that's this, this, uh, this fair fair doing thing, you know, that, that we have. Yeah. And I, he didn't call it, you know, uh, uh, storytelling, the circle, but it was that, you know, he was, Glissant was, uh, has written in the in the um, uh, stage comments, you know, what he, he, he wished and how he saw that. And that's was exactly, it was uh, in complete harmony with what I wanted to do. I have this kind of, of, of interactivity between the, it's hard for me to pronounce the name public because we don't have public. We have people, in the in the in whatever the circle will it be the circle of of uh, storytelling or the circle of relay wars or even the second of the wake la, la veille the, the the wake for for the the, the dead anybody can get, get get in and do his things you know but you have of course to respect a few rules and i think it was exactly this interactivity that uh, interested me uh, most most and as I told you, I told you, I told you before, it's a way of telling with our own orality, our own knowledge to tell stories and to uh, do the transmission. Uh, mm -hmm. And I respected that a lot uh, in the in the uh, original uh, idea and thought of of Gisan. Uh, I remember when I, I had a, a conversation because I got I got to get I had to get a permission of, from Sylvie Gisan. Uh, to to take in my in my own hands this uh, this uh, display, and um, uh, when I started to talk about her to what I wanted to do, she was a kind of uh, reluctant and say, "Well, be careful, don't touch too many, you know, thing." Then, stretched, I did so, I did something very strat strategical. 
I told her, I told her do you know what is uh, the wake in uh, the tradition of the wake in uh, for for the dead in a uh, in a uh, in uh, area in the Caribbean? She said, "Of course I know, uh, because uh, she's uh, she was a Bissan's wife, and mostly she told me that at the moment of the death of." of uh, Glissant, they did a huge uh, wake, you know, the year. Yeah, I heard about it, yeah. And she was, she, she was so glad and happy and impressed by that, that when I told you that more or less my intention was to, to put the, what, what you cannot call a theater play, but to put it in, the, in this uh, uh, frame. Uh, of, of, and she said, okay. And I said, do you, do you remember that in the in our VA, we, we don't we don't have only written words. We can improvise. We can uh, start to to tell a, a storytelling. We can start to play. She said, yeah, yeah, yes, okay. And that's how strategically I get her permission to do to take you know the the boldness to, yeah. to do what you know what I, I intended to do, and I did it with a great uh, joy. Joy, yeah. Next to you know, Emer, we also hear texts from uh, Malcolm X or uh, Angela Davis. Her portrait is shown. It's a collage. And uh, Glissant, who we feel close to at the university, at my university, he was a professor. I never got to meet him. He was already in retirement. Um, but we heard, you know, about the drummings that went on all night um, as an honor. You know, as far as I know, he was on the list for the Nobel Prize. Um, which he might have gotten. Um, but uh, for the audience who come into a very big room, it's that, as Eddie Comper said before, is a, a, the Sony Center is a round building, almost a circle-like circus uh, building, like the very first theaters, which were uh, in the round, uh, the Globe, uh, the first theater in Germany, the Autoneum was kind of like this in the round. Audience members sit in a circle on chairs and benches behind them are screens. There are only two lines, very few people actually can see it. Behind the audience members are screens, um, the size of large, huge barn doors. They are transparent, things can be projected on them or you see uh, kind of archetypical figures behind, people painted in white bodies, black bodies and in, in costumes that are, um, dreamlike, but also traditional uh, costumes, a mask-like uh, representation. Then three actors mostly come in through the doors and uh, and tell the stories to each other and to the audience um, of these uh, texts. And then we see a group of children at the end comes in and uh, asks questions and plays. Uh, you have uh, a dancer going in, uh, in between. So it is really an experimentation um, with the form. And I think it's an ongoing work in progress. Still, um, there could be adjustments made, and, but it's a, a beautiful experience. I really think that go old idea of the theater as ritual, as ceremony, like Richard Schachner wrote and talked so much about it, Turner, and the big uh, uh, realization now after the time of Kony that we have to get back into circles into very simple things. And it is not so great in New York City to say the Michael Jackson Broadway show is up and now we have our theater back. What, what does it mean really? It doesn't mean anything to us for that new time we live in. And I think this idea of what you are experimenting here for your place is a great example um, of something. It's alive and it doesn't need the outside world that exists actually for itself. But of course, there are connections. Uh, maybe we ask Genevieve um, if she's still listening uh, with us and it hasn't fallen asleep at my talking. Uh, <laughs> um, no, not you, at all. You are in Montreal. You are an, uh, an actor, uh, uh, also working as a producer. You want to bring it to Canada. What's the idea behind that? Why do you? Why is that important uh, in a place where it, I've experienced the coldest days of my life uh, in the winter? You know, to bring this Caribbean play. Yeah, but you know, Glissant was very uh, fond of uh, Quebec. Uh, our national poet, uh, Gaston Miran, was a great, great friend of uh, Edouard Glissant. And uh, uh, as Dana and Emily says, uh, Glissant is all about relation, a lot about relation and about la langue, la relation à la langue. And in Quebec, he had a long conversation with Lise Gauvin. I don't know if you know the work of Lise Gauvin, which was a... a she she worked a lot with the uh, on the all the the, the text of Glissant, and when I I, I met uh, Gilbert, 
a few years ago, we decided to, to work on a pro project, a theater project, and Glissant was very pre present in that project. Unfortunately, the COVID made the, the project fail, so we didn't make it true. But now this project, uh, HDN, for me is like uh, it's important. I mean, it's really important to for people to see that in Montreal. When when he started his uh, PhD in Montreal, Gilbert it was very uh, amazed by the, the fact, or not amazed, disappointed by the fact that there was not a, a lot of uh, Af African or uh, Caribbean theater, or even in the public when we would go to the theater, he, he was like, where are they? <laughs> they? They're not there, they're not coming to the theater. So we have to bring them also. And as in the philosophy of Guisson, I mean, to, to, to get in relation, you have to be really grounded with your own, uh, your own uh, tradition, as I tradition. So I think for me, the the um, to bring this HDN to Montreal, maybe in a festival or even in a like TNM is very open because I I, I know uh, Lorraine Petal, which uh, is the director of uh, the TNM, which is a big theater in Montreal, and she was very uh, interested by the the project. So I think there's a there's a place for HDN uh, now <laughs> because it, it was not that uh, obvious a few years ago, but now we're really in a movement that has. Decoloniser l'histoire, as they say in uh, French. How do you say that in English? Decolo Decolonize Decolonize. history? Yeah. So we're, we're into that now. So I think it's a great time to, to, to bring that show. Yeah, and the same goes in a way for New York also. I think Gilbert would be disappointed. Um, as in our festival, uh, our play reading festival, we found that it was actually the first in the history of theater that a uh, Caribbean nation, French speaking, were together in a festival. It never happened in France. It's also interesting that we don't have a French representative with us in this discussion. You know, it's uh, Georgia, Indianapolis, and, uh, and Montreal. Um, it speaks a lot, I think. Uh, <laughs> um, um, we had great help for our festival, actually, from the French Cultural Services in New York. Once we got it started, and Nicole, and Laurent, and uh, it, had, it had a real impact, what we did. and. One of the reasons uh, to do this and why I feel also passionate about it, we learned that the largest immigrant community in New York City is not Asian American, just um, um, uh, Latino American or African American, it's actually Caribbean. Of course, through that also African uh, American, but it's from the Caribbean nations, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, uh, Cuba, Dominican Republic, and of course, Martinique, uh, uh, Guadeloupe, and, uh, and anywhere. So, and where are they? Where are those stories being told? Where can they be seen? Where can the kids, you know, see this and hear those stories of the ancestors, these figures Gilbert put behind the screens? And it is uh, really of a great, great importance to support that, to listen to it and find ways and also to get into training to have a next generation of people participate. Uh, Gilbert, if I counted right, I remember right, 36 people are involved uh, in this. It's a, a, a crazy production. Um, yeah, this, this, um, I'm yeah sorry. tell us a little bit about the group you work with. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, about the kids. Me, and also, how did you work with the actors? For me, it's very important to acknowledge to another, you know, salutation and uh, acknowledgement to um, Benedict Marino, who is the scenographer. And I spent one year, I repeat, one year working with the scenographer, Benedict Marino, at us, you know, talking and exchanging ideas and trying to fancy how we would, you know, materialize, you know, uh, uh, give shape to this dream and this, this project and idea we had. And we spent one year discussing and working until she, you know, does. Uh, those uh, squares, you know, uh, with a, a kind of uh, uh, um, see-through things, you know, according to to how the lights, you know, uh, uh, it, uh, it depends on how you enlight it, you know, you see or you don't see uh, the the character uh, behind. 
So uh, that's from this uh, year of, uh, of, of working hard, started, you know, uh, giving, it started giving birth to what you, what you saw, because little by little, we gathered the rest of the, of the team. Uh, Roger Olivier, who did the, the light, who did the tre a tremendous, a tremendous uh, creation of, of light. Uh, the thing is that, you know, it's a, it's a kind of nomadic uh, uh, um, thing, you know, that we, we, uh, we made out, you know, because it's, his destiny is to travel, you know, and we have to adapt. The, yeah. And the, right now the, you work with the carnival group, right? With the group who... Uh, so, yes, as I, I was starting to say, uh, we, the, the, the team begin to, to gather. I start, talked about Benedict, Marino, uh, Roger. Uh, and then for me, it was obvious that I had to tell this story with the permission and the blessing of the ancestors. And of course, for me, it was obvious that I had to, 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 to get together and have a partnership with people who had the same uh, uh, way of thinking. And those people was uh, the um, uh, movement, movement Cultural Guadeloupe, Vukum. And Vukum is not only a carnival uh, uh, entity, not, a, not only a carnival group, but they do a, a, a very important work uh, on the culture, on les wars, and, and this thing we had in common. So for me, it was obvious that we had to work together. We, they knew me, I, know, I knew their work, they knew my work. We uh, respected each other's work. Uh, we, if they worked, they, 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 they uh, I introduced to them, Siyaj introduced to them uh, Eugenio Hernandez uh, Espinoza was talking about, about him before. And from that, you know, uh, a lot of, of those things you saw started to, to, to grow up. And uh, it is a very important uh, part of, uh, of the unity and of, of uh, the, the, they are a very important part of the team. They are, I, I, I think it would be difficult for me to fancy, to imagine. Uh, this thing with that, uh, uh, that mm -hmm. uh. mm -hmm. Maybe we could ask Eddie if he's still there um, uh, uh, with us. Um, what did what did this play mean for his center, for the people, for uh, for everybody who normally comes? I mean, you run this since I don't know ten years, I think, or I don't know. Um, you're also a producer of music. You're a musician. Um, but what did it mean for all the people, the the, the who who come and who participate? What what does such a performance mean? Yeah, so people think uh, that's amazing, uh, amazing performance. But uh, my point of view, because I was a musician uh, before, um, but when I met Gilbert about different projects, because that's the second project we, 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 yes. we, we do uh, together. Um, for me, it's very important to have a new way of signature about our Caribbean spirit, Caribbean thinking, Caribbean um, writing, Caribbean play. And uh, so this production is a heavy production uh, because how many people on it. But uh, for me, it was important to, to show this for, for, for the, the people, for the Guadalupe people, for uh, the political people too, because the message is very important on it. Uh, you know, Grissin was uh, some people who got a message, a, a strong message uh, about colonization, about uh, um, how, how we was in the Caribbean, how we supposed to be in the future, uh, how, how ways we can take. And uh, so this project for me, for us in the Cultural Center Sonis, Make sense, make uh, make a new a, a, a new way about creating, about playing, about many things. In mixture culture, uh, our roots culture, but in a contemporary uh, uh, play, in a contemporary uh, point of view. So it was for us and one opportunity, but it, we ought to be in the projects. That's why we are co-production about this project. 
Yeah, no, I thought it was an amazing moment, but I saw this center, which has different levels, very open, very much, much of air around it. You know, it was a sculpture that was inhabited, like every room, uh, something was happening, people eating, talking, uh, a school class came uh, to see the afternoon performance, a little three or four year old kid helped to bring the props and try to some dance and pretended to be an actor. I could see that very old people, it was a mixture of families. Um, I think it really um, was um, an event of the community. People, their faces were very proud of it, but also some kind of, yeah, that's us. You know, they were not, uh, as you would say, breasted. I don't want people to look with gluey eyes and say, oh, this is such great theater. They, he said he want, don't don't look so stupid, he said. You know, no, they but the audience, when they just looked and said, yeah, this is us. This is where we come from. It helps us to be here in the moment, and it give, makes us... Um, uh, comfortable with the future. And I would like to remember everyone that this is a highly intellectual text, a collage. You know, what you might say, this is for undergrad or grad students, but you did it for the community in a circle with, uh, yes, a dance group that also does a carnival and mask. So it's a quite a unique production. Um, Elvia, what do you, what do you, what do you think uh, is the future of this? Excuse me, Frank, before, yes. before you, you, you we, uh, Elvia talks, I have to excuse, excuse me and to, because I have to leave the, the yeah. meeting because my, the, the play is starting with the, the, the children, you know, with the schools and I would like to have a look, you know, so I, I'm, I'm I, so uh, I regret. If you can take I deeply laptop. regret to to you know yeah. to leave the, the meeting. Can and, you take uh, the laptop? I that uh, we'll have opportunity to meet you again, uh, Dana and uh, and uh, Emily and uh, and okay. So I'm, I'm I get to I get to go and see what yeah. happens. I don't know, Eddie. Can you take the laptop and have a look down from your office, the button into the theater? Is that possible? Uh, I think it's possible. We can we, we we can try to to go in the place because that that uh, that we I'm talking about that uh, at two o'clock we have the students who 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 come to see the, the play, mm -hmm. and uh, yesterday was the same. We have one uh, for the public, but one one play for the student. So take and, the laptop and uh, go down with uh, Gilbert and let's have a look, and then we. Maybe yes, of course. Let, let us go. <laughs> let us go. <laughs> so I would like to say then thank you to Emily and uh, Elvia, Daniela, and uh, and everybody, uh, Dana involved, um, and uh, and let's see if we can see um, a can little we, bit. Yeah. Do, do we see the cover um, of of my? Yeah, yeah, you know. So also, you know, in two facts, uh, Eddie is also um, uh, Gilbert is writing his PhD, uh, inspired also by the work, and Emily is putting together um, uh, the material in a publication. Thea, if you have the cover, um, we can look at it for a moment. Um, this is a preliminary that's... cover shared by the press. Um, it's a forthcoming um, critical edition that I co-authored with Andrew Daly, who I co-translated with. And um, related to what everyone's saying about how timely and important the work is, we wanted to equip um, English speaking teachers, artists, and scholars to stage the play. It needs to be staged. So there are lots of notes, there's staging notes, there's an introduction that talks about the history that I mentioned. Um, and the what, what you said, Frank, about it being a work in progress, it's really important, I think, for, for the soul of this play. Glissant published it in Acoma, but he published it just kind of as well, here's what we did, because it, it is a theatrical practice that needs to be renewed. And we wrote our edition with that goal in mind of future renewals. And so um, we hope that other artists and teachers listening to this will want to pick it up and do their own performance. Fantastic. Or if they do it, they can also go back and hear you guys uh, talking about it. I think we lost Eddie. Compa oh, here he is, Eddie. Can you... Um, um, Thea, if you go back to the full screen, um, we see, uh, yeah, this is the theater. These are the screens. Um, they are preparing, yeah. Um, and these are the, the building walls that are open. This is the stage pressure. Eddie, and if you could go outside, Eddie, show us the courtyard of this roundabout theater. Um, and uh, and maybe he's not hearing us. 
Um, but anyway, this is the uh, this is the the space, and in twenty minutes, uh, uh, I don't know, a hundred school kids uh, will come together, and um, and will um, will see the show. So thank you everybody for participating. I think this was a great talk. We learned a lot, and um, Elvia, fantastic that you put so much life energy in this to produce it, and you are working on it to get it around the world, right? You're mute again. You have to. Uh... With the, like, the with the collaboration of the of the compare, so the yeah, yes, uh... right. We, I, I'm not mute, but I, I'm just uh, working <laughs> in the place to see the place. The place. This is that open, beautiful cultural center. The architecture is beautifully open. Wind goes through uh, the offices. It could also be a theater setting in its own, with all the and audience could be inside, and then. These are the, the, the streets. Thank you, Eddie. But let's go to Elvia as the last word, uh, maybe one or two sentences about future projects. Thank well, you. Thank yeah. you. So actually, as, uh, Eddie compared with uh, uh, Cap Excellence, the Centre Culturel Sonis. So the next step would be to, um, that, so this play will be presented in the, in the festival. And I think it would be the, the opening of the festival. So it would be on October. And then um, we are planning to go also to um, Martinique to the festival, to, to the theater festival of Martinique. And next year, next year to Avignon. And hopefully, hopefully also to Canada. Yeah. Fantastic. And <laughs> so thank you all again. Thank you for how around. Thank you, Thea. So great that you were with us. And I think this really gave us a little insight into an important place on planet Earth, a place we do not know about because, um, you know, uh, we hope, as Brecht said, the history is written by the victory powers. I think now it is really a time, you know, to look at the other side as we had heard enough of the Versailles uh, palaces, which are built on the blood of the people in the Caribbean who lived here were slaves and this is where the richness came from and I think we should go to these places and stop going to the big uh, uh, palaces um, and adore the golden walls and Kautu. So come to a good loop in October and see the play at Eddie Cobert's uh, Play Sunnis and many, many others. Thank you so much and I hope to see you all soon next Monday. We resume Siegel Talk with about a, a, a play about a Ukrainian playwright in, who's working in Boston and in New York. So uh, follow us. I hope you will stay with us and thanks to our audience to take time to listen in and uh, goodbye and thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.